Hello, and welcome to Lesson 6 of Social Studies with Mr. Appel. Today we will be talking about the United States government, specifically, what is federalism? Federalism refers to the system in which you have one national government, federal government, and then individual states that have their own governments. And they share responsibilities and duties and power. That is federalism. And we are not the only country in the world to use a federalist system. Both of our direct neighbors, Canada and Mexico, also have a type of federalist system. So what is federalism and why is it important to learn about? Well, first of all, the federal government and the state governments need to work together, especially in times of crisis, which is what we're seeing right now. Over the weekend, there was a rumor that uh, there may have been a quarantine issued by the federal government blocking people from leaving New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, three different states. The governor of New York pushed back on that, Andrew Cuomo, and said, I, I'm not in favor of that. That's not fair to our state. And so you saw firsthand the conflict that can occur sometimes between federal and state governments. Ultimately, the president relented, meaning he backed down, and there was no quarantine. Instead, there's a travel advisory. But that just shows you this is a real and ongoing issue of government. So how does the system work? Well, the federal government, as outlined in the U.S. Constitution, there's a, something called the Supremacy Clause. Supremacy means they're above. The federal government is above the state governments. So their laws are over the state laws. It doesn't, but it doesn't mean the state laws can't do anything on their own. It just means whatever they come up with as a law has to agree with the federal constitution. <clears throat> and whatever the federal laws are supersede, goes above, any state laws. So let's see what are the things that states are allowed to do. Here's just a small example of what states can do on their own. They can make their own rules on certain issues. Number one is gambling. If people want to go and gamble their money, um, that is up to the individual states. So if someone wants to go buy lottery tickets, uh, they are allowed to do that. That's a legal form of gambling. If someone wants to go to a casino and bet on cards and things like that, that is depending, depending on what state you're in. Some states have made that illegal. Some states have made that legal. The first state to make it legal, Nevada and uh, New Jersey, and that's why they have so many betting casinos, but it's spread now. So that's a state issue. Next is legalizing certain drugs. Now, the federal government makes the laws that outlaw the drugs that they think are too dangerous, but something like marijuana um, is now up to the individual states to decide whether they want to make it legal or illegal whether people can use it for medication purposes or people can't use it at all. That's up to individual states. Marriage. Now marriage, I put an asterisk because this has changed in recent years. Um, we learned that certain states used to have laws that said blacks and whites could not get married to each other. Well, the federal government stepped in, the Supreme Court, and in 1967 they said that's not constitutional. So that is no longer up to the states. And the same thing with gay marriage. The Supreme Court stepped in and said, you cannot regulate that. So that is open to all 50 states. Now, there's other certain types of marriages that we're not going to go into, but that states do actually still decide whether or not they're legal. So that is an issue that has changed, but there's still some power that the states have. Next, punishment. The way that a state runs its own uh, legal system, the courts, etc. So... If you commit an offense in Kentucky, you may face a different penalty than if you committed the same offense in New York, or if you committed the same offense in North Dakota, or if you committed that offense in New Mexico. Not all 50 states have the exact same laws. Now, they're pretty close to each other, obviously. You know, the really bad things you can't do in one state, you can't do in other states. But the punishments they give out might be different. You might go to jail for 10 years in one state and only 8 years in the other state. Or, or the, the worst penalty, the ultimate penalty, the death penalty, is legal in certain states, but not in others. So that's up to the states. They get to decide. Transportation. Each state can run its own uh, highways a certain way, their local roads, etc. They can set their own speed limits, and that even, might even break down to the local level, like different cities can set a speed limit. So that's another thing that is a local or state issue.
okay? And the last thing says certain laws, and I put in parentheses guns. Gun control, we've already talked about on this um, YouTube channel. Different states come up with different laws that they want about guns. There's no, there, I mean, there are certain national laws about guns, but other things like whether or not people are allowed to walk around with a gun on their hip, like, you know, the police are allowed to, of course. I'm talking about regular citizens. In some states, you are allowed to do that. It's called open carry. In other states, you are not allowed to walk around with a gun on your hip, you know, in a holster. So that is another thing that, that is um, dependent on what state you're in. So there's definitely, as you can see, a lot of things that states still do on their own, as opposed to federal control. So it's, it's a very interesting system. And again, we're seeing it play out in real time as states now need to cooperate with each other like never before to prevent the spread of COVID-19. And states are also dependent on the federal government to get all the supplies they need, ventilators, et cetera. The law that was just passed on Friday will help a lot. And last but not least, if you're wondering where is the federal government, you know, who are they? Well, we've talked the federal government has three branches legislative, executive, and judicial. And then within each branch, there's thousands of people who work for each branch. And yes, the federal government is based in Washington, D.C., which is right here. But there are federal government offices throughout the country because the federal government is doing things in and for all 50 states. So there are federal buildings right here in New York City. We have um, federal courts. We have federal prisons. We have um, federal museums, so to speak. We have national park sites. Those are run by the federal government, like Federal Hall that we went to um, as a school, as a class trip. Federal Hall was originally the capital, the site of the first capital of the United States. It is run by the National Park Service, which is part of the Department of the Interior, which is part of the executive branch of the federal government. Okay, so what I want you to do for this lesson, and it will be due tomorrow, is find out um, what powers, what things the federal government can do on its own, and what things the federal government, um, what things states can do on their own. And there are tons of good Venn diagrams out there that will help you on, on the internet. Um, it'll be interesting to see. It'll be interesting to see because it's, it's playing out right now in real time. Uh, I hope everyone is well. I hope everyone's family is well. Stay safe, cover your cough, wash your hands. And we'll see you later today in our Google Meet chat rooms. Thanks for watching. Take care.